Hey guys, Scott from Fright Props here, and today I'm going to show you how to make this. Now that is creepy. Let's take a look at how you can create this effect yourself. So what we've created here today is a haunted moving painting that actually features three separate characters running on three separate screens, but in a synchronized fashion. Now to create that, what we've done is we've used three standard LCD uh, television screens. And for each screen, we have a Brightsign HD224 player. Those three players are networked together by a network hub here in the front. So each one is connected via ethernet cables through the network hub. The first player is what we would call the master player. It's telling all the other players in sequence what they should do and when. To the master player, I've attached three different triggers. So we have the one that was used in the intro here, and then I have two others, which will uh, start different effects when we activate them. Each trigger will activate a different effect. So that's the hardware side of this prop. It's actually not that complicated. About 90% of this prop takes place on the computer side where we use the Bright Author software to create this effect using the Bright Sign players. So let's hop over to the PC. We'll jump in the Bright Author software and we'll show you how to create a prop like this. All right, so here we are over at the PC. I'm just going to launch the Bright Author program here. Once it's open, we can go ahead and make it full screen. And we're going to start creating our projects. Now, some people get a little intimidated when they hear that they have to use a software to program these video players, but this is a pretty easy to use uh, software. It's all pretty much drag and drop, so there's no like hardcore computer knowledge required. So don't let that stop you from trying to get in here and, and uh, use these players, because they're really cool and they can do a lot of cool stuff. So uh, in order to start our project, we're just going to go to File and New Presentation. Uh, we're going to name this um, Three Portrait Demo and we're going to start with screen one. I have a folder here on my desktop. We're going to save these uh, scenes in. Uh, for our bright sign model, we're going to select HD224. Uh, there's a ton of different models here, so make sure to select the model of the bright sign player you're working with. Connector type, we're going to use HDMI. Screen resolution, this is very important. Make sure that you set this to match whatever screens you're using. So we were using 720p screens, so I've selected 1280 by 720 by 60 hertz. If you are using like a 1080p screen, you can choose 1920 by 1080 uh, from the list here. Or if you're using an even higher definition, like a 4K screen, you can select that as well. Just make sure to match your screen resolution here with whatever you're using. If you try to use too high a resolution uh, on this setting, it won't display properly on your screen. And for monitor orientation, we're going to leave that at landscape. And we're going to hit create. When we select a template, we're going to use full screen. So we just click full screen and then click choose. And this opens up our workspace. Now the first thing we want to do is go up to the upper right here and click interactive. That's going to give us all these interactive options that we're going to use when we're creating this effect. The next thing we want to do, because this is our first player and it's going to be our master player that tells all the other players what to do, we're going to go up to file and we're going to click presentation properties and then we're going to go to interactive and here we're going to enable enhanced synchronization and we're going to click master because this is our master video player for our domain here we're just going to leave this at zero this can be any number from zero to uh, 127 uh, and it doesn't really matter what number but it just has a match with all the players that you're trying to get to talk to each other so we're just going to leave it at zero and we'll do the same for the other players that we set up so once we have all that selected we can click OK and we can start creating our project 
So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to our media library. I'm going to click Other, and I'm going to put an event handler in our workspace here. So I'm just going to click here where it says Event Handler and just drag and drop that in. And I'll talk about why we're going to do that in a second here. Uh, then I'm going to go ahead and go over to Files under our media library, and I'm going to open up the folder that contains our video files and here it is. Now these files we get from Atmos FX. Uh, it's part of their video called Unliving Portraits and you can download this directly on their site. These are HD video files. They're already all formatted, uh, flipped over, and ready to create a uh, project like this. So that's the best way to do it. Just download the files direct from them. You can just download these files or you can download a whole suite with different files and effects as well. Now you can see for each character we have four different videos. We have a buffer video, which is essentially just a static image, um, and we have that for each of the three characters, the gentleman, the girl, and the lady. And then we have uh, three versions of the Family Feud animations, and they each sort of relate to each other. So Family Feud 1 for the gentleman relates to Family Feud 1 for the girl, and Family Feud 1 for the lady, etc. We want to make use of all these files, so we're going to create a um, project that has all of them in it. So the first thing we're going to do is just take our gentleman buffer, this is just our static, basically, image of the gentleman character, and just drag that into our workspace here. And this is going to create the foundation of our effect. So as I mentioned earlier, I placed this event handler here, and the reason that we're doing that, this is sort of where we want to start the player. The player's going to boot up, and it's just going to start this event handler, which is basically just a blank screen that is waiting for instruction. And the reason that we're going to do that is we're going to add a timer that will basically sync all the other players up. Because these players can boot at different speeds. Maybe player two vo uh, boots up way faster than player one, but we want everything to boot up and start playing uh, their files in uh, synchronized fashion. So in order to do that, we're going to add a timed event here. So we're going to click our timeout event, and then we're going to click at the bottom of the event handler here and just drag this down to our buffer video and let go. So that's basically created a timer, and when that timer expires, it's going to play our uh, buffer video here. And we can go ahead and double-click on that timer, we can specify how long the timer is. I'm going to enter 10 seconds, and we'll see that it's uh, transitioning to a new state, and it's transitioning to our gentleman buffer uh, video here. And then what we're going to do is actually add a command to this, a command that tells the other players that they should start playing their videos as well. So to do that, we go to Advanced. We're going to add a command. Here on the uh, Commands menu, we're going to select a Link command, and it's going to be a Synchronization command. And we're going to enter a command word here. This can be anything we like. I'm just going to use the word loop in all capitals. And we're going to click OK. So now we've basically created a blank screen that waits 10 seconds and then tells this buffer video to start playing and at the same time tells the other players to start playing their buffer videos. Now we need to tell this video what to do when it finishes. So we're going to select a media end event here and then we're just going to click down at the bottom of the video and drag into open space and let go. And we're going to tell this video to transition to a new state once it finishes, but the state is just going to be itself. So that means it's just going to keep looping over and over again. And we're also going to add a command to this event. In this case, it doesn't really matter because these are just sort of static images uh, for each of these uh, sort of buffer screens. But if you had a video that had some animation in it and you wanted to make sure that those stay synced, maybe one video is slightly longer than the other, you can add, again, that synchronization command here. So we'll go and we'll add a command. Again, it's a link command, synchronize. And we'll just add that command word again, loop, and click OK. So now when this video finishes, it's going to loop back in on itself and play again, but it's also going to send that loop command to the other players that it's networked with in order to tell them that they should start playing their loop file again as well to keep everything nice and synchronized. Now the other thing that we want to do is be able to trigger these additional effects. So we're going to go ahead and drag those into our workspace as well. These are the Family Feuds version 1, 2, and 3. Now the bright sign players that we're using are triggerable. They have... Uh, button inputs that can be used, and those buttons are represented here by these icons on the top. We're going to start with button 0, that's the first uh, button that we're going to be using, and in order to tell this video what to do when button 0 is pressed, we just click here for button 0, then we just click on the buffer video, drag over to the video we want to play when button 0 is pressed, and let go. And so now you can see a command has been entered here, when button 0 is pressed, it's going to play this video which it's labeled as 2. Now, because we also want the other players that are connected to this master player to do that same thing, we're going to go ahead and double-click on that button icon, go to Advanced, and again, we're going to add a command. We're going to add a link command, synchronize, and we're going to use the uh, word trigger1 here. And we're going to save that. 
So now we've created an event where we press the button, it's going to start playing our video here, and it's also going to send that trigger word, the word trigger one, to those other players. And once we get to those screens, we'll show you how to tell them to receive that command. So we'll do the same uh, for the other videos. We're going to use the uh, number one button here, and we're going to have that go to our second video, and the two button will go to our third. Now for these buttons we need to set up a separate trigger command so we're going to take our button one here double click go to advanced again add a command link and we'll call this trigger two and hit OK and then for our button two we're gonna do the same thing add a command link command and we'll call this trigger three and hit OK then for each of these videos, we need to tell those videos what they're going to do when they finish playing. And so we're going to take a media end event here, and we're just going to drag from the bottom of each video back to our buffer video. And that's just telling them that when they finish playing, they should go back to this buffer video here. You could add that loop command again into these to make sure that everything stays uh, all coordinated. But because we already have it here at the media end of our, our kind of looping video, our buffer video, we don't really need to add it in anywhere else because this is going to resync everything when it loops anyways. All right, so that's the basic setup for our master controller. Now we need to set up the slave controllers and tell them uh, what they need to do uh, when this master controller se uh, sends those trigger signals that we've embedded in these commands. So to do that, we're just going to save our project here. And then I'm going to click File and do Save As. And I'm going to label this Screen 2. Now the first thing I'm going to do is come in here and delete all these commands. I'm going to leave the video files where they are because we can actually swap them out pretty easily. Um, now the next thing I'm going to do, because this is no longer the master controller we're working on, I'm going to go to File, I'm going to go to Presentation Properties and Interactive, and I'm going to click Slave. Uh, remember to leave this domain, whatever you had it for the first one, so we're just going to leave it at zero and hit OK. So now this is set up as a slave to that master video player that we created earlier. So we have our event handler here uh, still as our main thing that happens when the video player powers up. So it's basically just going to be waiting to receive a command from that master controller. So instead of using a timeout or a media end event, we're actually going to use this icon here, which is a synchronization event. And that's basically going to be waiting for that command. So we just click on our icon here and then click on the bottom of the event handler and drag down to our buffer video here. And it's going to pop up our menu. So it's going to say what it's doing. It's transitioning to a new state. It's transitioning from the event handler to our buffer video. And when should it do that? When it hears the word loop. And we're going to click OK. So now we're just listening for that command. When this player hears that loop command, it's going to start playing its buffer video here. Now we need to tell this what to do when that video finishes. And we're just going to wait again for that loop command to come in to keep everything synchronized. So we're just going to create a new synchronization event and type loop here and transition to a new state. And we're just going to transition back around to the buffer video and click OK. So now when this video is playing and it sees that loop signal come in from the master controller, it's just going to loop back around on itself. And that's going to keep everything very tightly synchronized. So now we've gone from our event handler. The players are booted up. They've waited about 10 seconds to make sure they're all booted up and ready to go. They're playing their buffer files. Now we need to tell them what to do during these buffer uh, videos when they receive those other trigger commands that we entered. So to do that, we just add more synchronization events. So we click on our icon, and we drag from the bottom of the buffer video over to, say, video 1. And now we uh, have our menu up here. So this is saying it's going to transition to a new state. It's going to play Family Feud 1. And when should it do that? When it hears the command trigger 1. And we're going to click OK. And then we just need to do that same thing for the other two videos. So same thing, drag and drop over. This one's going to be for trigger 2. And the last one, we'll do the same exact thing for the command trigger 3. And hit OK. Lastly, all we need to do is tell these videos when they end to go back to the buffer video. So we're going to click our media end event. We're going to click and drag from each video back to the buffer video. And that tells them that when they finish playing, they should just go back here to this buffer video. So we're basically done, but as you can see, we still have the video from our master video player here. Um, I wanted to just show how easy it is to uh, interchange videos. So all we have to do to change that is select the video that we want, and our second screen is going to be our lady character here. So for the lady buffer video, we just drag and drop uh, into the uh, gentleman buffer, and it'll overwrite it there. Do the same for the three family feud videos, one-on-one, -on -one, two two-on-two, and three-on-three. -on -three. You'll notice that the name of the file here doesn't change. If you want, you can double-click that 
come in here and relabel it so that it matches the actual file. Um, if you want everything to be sort of real organized and clean, uh, you can do that and click OK. Uh, but you don't need to do that. You can leave it the way it is. So we're going to now save this. This is our second screen. And the reason we went through and did all of this uh, setup before we started working on our third screen is that now we can basically just click File and Save Screen 2 As and save this as Screen 3 and just replace the videos with our girl character because all the commands are the same. Just drop them in like that and then click File and Save. And it's done. So let's just run through again real quick what we've done. File, we'll go to our screen one file here. All right, screen one, remember we have our event handler here. It's going to wait 10 seconds before starting to play the buffer video. When it does that, it's going to send a signal to the other players to start playing their buffer videos at the same time in sync. If this video finishes, it's just going to loop back on itself and tell the other players to do that as well. If it receives any of these three trigger inputs, it's going to play the corresponding video while at the same time sending the correct uh, trigger word, trigger one, trigger two, or trigger three, to the other players, and they'll play their versions of these Family Feud videos uh, in sync with the versions being played by the master player. All right, so once everything is set up, the last thing to do is publish. Uh, so we can go up here and click publish. Now we have an SD card uh, inserted into our drive, so make sure that you're navigating to the correct place. Ours is in E, so that is correct. And if this is the first time that you're setting up these units, you want to make sure to click Standalone Unit with Setup. And then you also want to make sure to click Specify Firmware Update. We're using the HD224 player, so we want to click here for Production Release, and then click OK. Now we can go ahead and click Publish, and it's going to pop up a screen with a ton of different options and information. Luckily, we only have to worry about one field here, and that's the name. We just want to give the player a name. I'm going to call this one FP1 and we can go ahead and publish by clicking OK. Alright, so this process can take a while, especially when it's writing the um, firmware update to the card, so just be patient, let it do its thing, and we'll come back when it's finished. Alright, so once that operation completes, it'll go ahead and tell you it's done here. You can just click OK. You can eject that SD card from your system and bring it over to the player and insert it and then power the player up. It'll go through, again, a kind of long uh, boot process where it updates the firmware. Uh, that process as well can take a while, so make sure you're patient. Just let it go through its whole operation. Don't turn stuff off in the middle of it. Um, and now we need to repeat that process for each of the other two uh, shows that we've created. Again, each of these uh, TVs needs its own video player. Each video player needs its own SD card. So we're going to go ahead and uh, up here, File, we're going to switch to Screen 2, and we would just go through the same uh, process we just did. Clicking Publish, uh, Standalone Unit with Setup, specifying our firmware update as the production release here, clicking OK, and the only thing that we would change is the name. I would just uh, enter a different name, so we used FP1 before, maybe we'd use FP2. And you would click OK, go through that process, and then repeat that again for the third screen until you have all three SD cards ready to go. Once you have all your SD cards ready to go, again, just bring them over to the players, put them in, power the players up, and just wait for everything to sort of update. It can also take a while, even when you're not updating firmware, when you're just changing files. When you power up these systems from uh, scratch when they're turned off, they can take a while to boot up, for the players to boot up, and then we have that 10-second timer. So if you were to power up a system like this, make sure to give it two or three minutes just to catch up and get warmed up and ready to go. All right, so that's everything we have to do over here at the PC. We're going to go ahead and bring those SD cards over, uh, get all the players set up. We'll take one final look at the finished product, and uh, we will see you in a second. All right, so that's a look at how to create three haunted moving paintings that uh, have three interacting characters that are synchronized together to all play at once. Thanks a lot for watching. If you have any questions, of course, you can leave a comment on this video or send us an email at sales at frightprops.com. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you next time. Ha 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 ha!